Did you know oh. that, Nathan? Did you know that your ass controls the band? My ass controls, yeah, it controls the band. Controls the band. Watch. Wh Watch what happens when you stand up. Look. Wow. Oh, I. They're just looking at ass. Wow. I'm drunk with power. <laughs> Well, and we do have a drink here. Yes. Because we should say yes. happy, happy 25th birthday, birthday yeah. to Camila Cabello. Wow. Cheers, Nathan. Wow. Mm. Now, tell me, what are your special plans for this here birthday? I am having a Y2K-themed birthday party. Oh! Yeah. It's actually my first... It's my first, like, adult birthday party, too, so I'm... Very excited about that. All 2000s music, everybody's Stop. coming, dressed up in 2000s stuff. I actually found out, I thought that I was like the first Way person. Way back in the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> wow. well, that's, that's like, I feel like that's the time that I'm nostalgic I for. I understand, I'm nostalgic for 2000s too. <laughs> What were you doing at 25? I was a very late bloomer. I didn't, I didn't date in high school or... Me too. Or I didn't go to the prom or Me too. anything. So, so, well, if I'd only had your number. So, <laughs> no. I mean, things could have gone in a whole different way. <laughs> My God. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I was sort of making up for lost time when I got to New York City. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going to do, make up for lost time. So now, how are you feeling? How are you feeling, age of 25? Are you excited about this? I feel like you are entering a new Womanhood. chapter. Am I right? Think this is the first time you've been single? Well, not the first time I've been single, but the first time I've been single, I was also late bloomer, like didn't date in high school. And then by the time I was in my like early 20s, I've been in relationships up till now. So this is my first time being single in my 20s, um, which it's not even like, that's not even what I'm looking forward to right now. Mm -hmm. I think right now it's about girlfriends and, and like, I feel like my focus is on my friendships right now. My, my friendships and... <laughs> Just growing as a person. I think this is a really exciting time. Thank you. I think this is an incredibly exciting time Thanks. to be Camila Cabello. I do. Thank the you. new album is brilliant. You just had a huge <laughs> hit movie. I think this is an incredible time for Camila Cabello to focus on her yes. and what she wants. That's Thank what you. I think. Oh, yeah, I well, really you Cinderella, was, Correct. I thought was wonderful. Oh, oh. Thank you so much. You, you were just amazing? fantastic. She's unbelievable. And you, and you were the mouse. You That's were, not... Well, it's you, mainly her. You were, I know. Ignore me. You, it's it was, her. It was, it was, it's a big... Isn't it a Twitter Oscars favorite or something? Apparently so. Apparently it, so. Yes, apparently so. Yes. Nathan, that means so much coming from you. Thank you. I mean, here's the thing. Any compliment coming from Nathan Lane I mean... Is... I mean, I don't... It's I know my birthday I, present. Well, here's the thing, Nathan. I know I tell you this. But I don't know if you ever truly can accept or hear me that you are one of my favorite people on planet Earth. You are oh. somebody that I look to. I look to you so much. I, you know this. I saw I... the producers four times in, London. in the West End. Right. Uh, and then you times... followed me home one night, didn't you? <laughs> that's what you, that's what I, you told no, me. I, I did, because I couldn't yeah. believe I was seeing you yeah. in the flesh. I was leaving the theater. And I'd seen a friend, and, uh, and I was walking around, and at Drury Lane, the, the stage door's quite a way up. Right. It's a long block. Yeah. And I got and I saw Nathan Lane, and it was a matinee. You were, I don't know if you were going home, yeah. but I couldn't. I was like, oh, that's him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. I think I followed you for about four blocks <laughs> until I thought, what are you doing? This is really weird. <laughs> I, I wasn't ever going to come up and talk to you. I just right. sort of... Well, and, you and, for and then a while. I got the, I got the restraining order, and, and I got that in the right. post. And but we we, that we up got now. past that. Camila, you talk of spending time with girlfriends. You did something recently, and I don't know what this is. You did a mudder. No, it's event. a tough mudder. A mudder. A tough mudder. A tough mudder. What? Um, Here's you and your friends. What's a tough mudder? Explain to me what a tough mudder is. Well, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I'm like. You know, I want to try new things. I want to have, you know, I want to travel. I want to have different experiences. And I was like, what is, like, the purest form of, like, a joyful day to me? And I feel like, I don't know if you guys feel 
this way, but I miss like being in school and we would have like this thing called a field day and we would like yeah, no, get I dirty and yeah, no, okay, I you don't miss that. You That's don't miss that. What you right. just described is hell on earth for me. Right. But carry on. Right. It's an obstacle course. It, we oh did like God. a 5K and it's Stop. actually really, it's scary. Like I thought the whole time going there that it was a competition. And then I got there and you find out it's not a competition and everybody's helping each other. If it was a competition, people would have died. For sure, because it's scary. It's like you basically, there's like trenches, there's mud trenches, you're like, you're getting scrapes. Like people are like, like we had to like have these guys that were there haul us over because it was, yeah, it, it was definitely challenging. It was like, we had to climb over this rope thing that was like, I have no concept of um, like height, but just very tall. I don't oh, know how many no. feet it was. So I did very... something like this with Prince Harry, and it nearly killed me. Is it right. that sort of like oh, a big assault? You, you course, just you... dropped a name. Let me get that for you. <laughs> oh, well, Prince I didn't go Harry. with Prince Harry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was hanging out with the Queen, yeah. <laughs> and believe me, I know a lot of queens, but this Queen is the big Queen. Can I tell you the scariest part of it? Um, the last obstacle was this thing called electroshock therapy. Oh, which is oh. crazy. I think this is called an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> Where basically oh. it's like all these wires hanging down, and you have the option of like crawling, or some people run straight through. And I, this was like my biggest fear that I had to conquer. Which, by the way, I, I didn't do it because I was like. This. Um, but, but my friend like got hit with the wire and she was like looked at me and she was like you don't want to do that she was like when people get like revived like if somebody has a heart attack and they do that thing she's like that now I know what that feels like like it's like a crazy amount of electric what, what shock. spa is this thing <laughs> that spa. has electro uh, shock well I'm glad you, you had a good time we shall not be there. Okay. Next yeah, time you no. go. But Nathan, no. we have to talk yeah. about your truly brilliant <laughs> show, The Gilded Age. We do. We must. Oh, James. James. For anyone who hasn't caught it, you have a lot of fans here in the studio. Oh. Tell us what it's about and who you play. Uh. It's uh, an HBO series uh, uh, written, uh, created by Julian Fellows mm. of, of Downton Abbey fame. Uh, it has a cast of thousands. Many, many, many uh, people from the theater are in it. Christine Bransky, wow. Cynthia Nixon, oh. uh, on and on. Carrie Coon, Morgan Spector, really wonderful actors. I play uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Ward McAllister, who was uh, a real historical figure. He was kind of a uh, self-appointed social arbiter of, yes. the, of the, uh, that period, and he and Mrs. Astor, the famous Mrs. Astor, uh, decided they wanted uh, American society to have an aristocracy, and they were going to be put in charge of that. And so he was, he was from Savannah, Georgia, and uh, he was, uh, I, I had a, there was a dialect coach for the, wow. for the entire series, but he, a man named Howard Samuelson, a wonderful dialect coach who helped me with this uh, southern accent because you know it can easily slip if you go one way you're your yosemite sam and then <laughs> you go the other way and you know i did not have sexual relations <laughs> so somewhere in the middle was lord sure. McAllister, and uh, it, he's just a very colorful character he's a man who made you know social climbing an art form and wow and you are so brilliant in the show and i'm so thrilled the show is such a smash